Hey, it's our first reoccurring Linux distro in the series. The Solus team just released version 4.1 a couple days ago, and, well, how could we not re-review it here on Distro Delves? Most of the changes to Solus 4.1 have been internal and backend stuff, so from the user's perspective, not a whole lot has changed. However, when I reviewed Solus in Season 1, I was doing it sort of off the cuff, but now there is a script that I follow, so this review will be far more structured than the previous one. And also, we're going to be looking at Solus KDE with the Plasma desktop since we already looked at Solus with Budgie. And that's about enough of the intro piece, let's talk about the installer for a bit. Actually, let's not. We already discussed the Solus installer in the previous review, and not much is different about it. The install itself went super fast, thanks to the new Z standard compression, which is something they highlighted in the blog post. And as you know, Solus doesn't have anything in the way of a welcome screen, so we'll just jump straight into the system resources. The post install size is 5.9 gigabytes, which is remarkably light, possibly the lightest in the series so far. Free is reporting the memory usage at about 570 megabytes. Now remember, this is KDE, which has a somewhat weird reputation for being a heavyweight desktop environment. Now, I foolishly launched the software center and installed some updates before I ran HTOP here, so the CPU usage isn't what you would actually see at idle. Now, look at those 73 tasks. I'm pretty sure that that's the lowest of all of the desktop environments and distros we've seen, where I think the average is about 100 tasks running. And also notice that there's 73 tasks, but 154 threads. That's indicative of proper multi-threading, which is always a delight to see. I'd love to do a series like this, but for desktop environments rather than full-blown distros, so we can dive deeper into stuff like this. But anyway, Solus 4.1 with the Plasma desktop is the first true KDE distro we've seen here on the series. Farron OS also ran Plasma, but it had a ton of GTK and no maps, as well as some custom theming to make them all look normal. Solus here is mostly pure KDE. It uses the standard slew of KDE apps, though it includes three different media players as well as two different text editors, which is weird, but pretty standard for KDE to be honest. Solus packs a healthy number of wallpapers and backgrounds, though most of them are pretty unremarkable. There are just a few styled Solus backgrounds, and those ones are pretty okay. Now my NVIDIA drivers were not installed by default, and I made the goof when I installed them by not ticking the 32-bit libs box, which is required for Steam. So later on when I launched Steam, it threw this weird error, and then I had to go back and install those libs, and it was pretty annoying. I don't like that. The NVIDIA driver version was 440, by the way. Systemd tells us that the startup time was a mind-blowingly fast 13 or something seconds, which is just ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that that's the fastest startup time for all of the distros on the series, like by far. NeoFetch shows us a pleasant little Solus ship logo, which is nice, as well as the kernel version being 5.4.12. 768 packages are installed, an interesting number. We got Bash 5.0, we've got the Plasma desktop running Kwin with the standard Breeze theme. I noticed that this particular build of NeoFetch does not list the monospace font, but it's Hack, which is the standard for KDE, and it's a great one, I highly recommend it. So I normally show mounting the external SSD in the networking segment, but I have to mount it anyway to show off the codec, so I'm just going to show it here, it worked fine, there wasn't any root required or anything like that. Now flat packs are not supported out of the box, but app images are, of course, but they did show this weird little dialogue, are you sure you want to execute this sort of thing? Now this is despite the files being flagged as executable, so I'm pretty sure this is a KDE thing. Snaps are supported out of the box, though you can only seem to access them or interact with them rather through the terminal. At least I didn't see any way of accessing them through the software center, which is kind of a weird thing. Codec support was pretty good, though one of the audio files opened with MPV rather than ELSA, the other media player. All of the video files played just fine. I'm probably going to remove that FFV1 file in the future because, so far, none of the distros that we've tested have been able to play it correctly, which makes me think it's a hardware-related issue. And I don't want to give the impression that the distro is doing something wrong, because I don't think it is. Now, Solus, despite not being based on Ubuntu or Arch, has a giant wealth of applications available to it. Between the default repos and the custom third-party apps repo thing, and if you want to use the Snap Store or Flathub, you can get pretty much anything on Solus. The only app I wasn't able to source natively on Solus was Zoom Meeting, but that's available through Flathub, so you would just need to install and configure Flatpak to get it on Solus. 
Now one thing I do want to quickly talk about is that the Solus mirrors were having some problems while I was filming the video. Solus 4.1 had just released when I was filming this, so it might be load related, but I don't know, I've never seen this happen before. Next up we've got networking. Every single distro we have looked at in the series has had problems in this area. Now there is this handy little context menu for setting up folder and file sharing with Samba, and it sort of worked. Much like Linux Lite in the previous episode of Distro Delves, the share appeared on my network and my workstation, but I couldn't access it. I was able to connect to my Windows laptop without issues, which is expected, but what wasn't expected is that I had issues connecting to my Linux workstation with SSH. I had to use the network connection manager to manually create the SSH connection, which is super annoying. I think this might be related to KDE and Dolphin specifically, but I'm not 100% sure. And then there's the printer support. My printer was automatically detected, configured, and it works just fine. And for the gaming segment, let's go ahead and start with Bluetooth because it was perfect. Maybe it's because KDE uses different services for setting up Bluetooth, but it was literally flawless. It configured and connected the very first try. OBS was great too. You can ignore those errors in the terminal in the background. They're more or less fine because the important thing is that I was able to record using NVENC and play it back. Though notice that the media player here is SM player, which is totally unstyled or something. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Now the first game up is Interstellar Marines, a native Linux game on Steam. It's running 1080p here and I had to crank the graphics down to get it to run smoothish. It's a fun game and I was able to play some of it. I think that if I wanted to play it seriously, I would go with 720p but it was fine. Next up, I wanted to show some Heroes of the Storm, but something about it changed, like the renderer changed or something, and you could get it running, but I didn't want to debug it for the video. This is just Overwatch, and it's running pretty well here at 1080p. Again, it's not perfect, like Interstellar Marines was 1080p, it wasn't running that good, but these are the default settings that Overwatch chose, and I'd call this playable, barely. Again, like Interstellar, I'd probably run it at 720p if I wanted to play a match seriously, but I'm just goofing around here and it's fine. And next up is this weird game called Red Eclipse. It's a game that's not actually generally found in most default repos, but I did see it in the Solus repos, so I wanted to give it a try. It's a free and open source first person shooter, and these are the default settings. It ran fine. The game is a little odd though. And now it's time for those Geekbench 5 benchmarks. Now from what I've gathered in the blog post, Solus didn't really include very many performance improvements besides a newer kernel and some cool e-sync stuff. Despite that though, Solus 4.1 pulled the highest average Geekbench CPU scores that we've seen on the series. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but still, it's always good to see improvements. But on the flip side, Solus 4.1 returned the single lowest Vulcan score in the series by a long shot. This is especially weird considering it's running newer drivers than other distros that we've tested in the series. Now this is totally my own speculation here, but I wonder if the problem with the Vulkan scores is Kwin, since there is a long history of Kwin not playing well with NVIDIA drivers. But is Solus 4.1 an improvement over Solus 4.0? I think so, yeah. They included some changes to Systemd to accommodate Docker and Podman, that's pretty cool. They also enabled eSync support out of the box, which is really helpful for getting good performance in games running with Proton. If we compare the Geekbench results between Solus 4 and Solus 4.1, we'll see small improvements here and there, but the important thing is that there's no major regressions. Now I can't compare the Vulkan scores because I didn't do Vulkan testing in Season 1, really, not seriously anyway, but there weren't any regressions in the CPU benchmarks, so hey. Overall, my opinion of Solus stays the same. It's a unique little distro, and it's more than welcome in a space dominated by Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distros. And with that, we have reached the end of this episode. I hope that you liked it, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Please let me know what you think of Solus 4.1 and the DistroDelve series in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about what I do, you can follow me on Twitter. I also have a Patreon. I have a coffee as well. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.